Hi guys, today I'm gonna to show you how to make this cute, quick knitted cable cowl. This is my child size. Um, I would say it fits sizes two to about eight. Um, and then I'll have an adult size available as well after that. So um, you will need one skein of Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick yarn. This is the color Raspberry. This is considered a super bulky weight yarn. One skein has is six ounces, 170 grams, 106 yards, 97 meters. And I'd say you probably need just about half the skein. You don't even need a full skein. You will need a size nine millimeter or US 13 knitting needles. You can knit this on straight needles or circular needles, but um, I used a nine millimeter or US 13 size knitting needle. You can go up or down in, in, in size. You know, you'll just have to figure out how to adjust the size of the cowl if you're going to change it. You will need either a double pointed needle or a cable needle. I usually just use a double pointed needle um, when I am knitting cables and I am using just the same size. It doesn't matter if you go down a size. Um, cable needles, needles are typically thinner. Um, I just don't, don't go up a size in needle size. You don't want to stretch the yarn out. So I am just using a US 13 nine millimeter double pointed needle as my cable needle. So just use whatever you feel comfortable with and you will just need some scissors and a tapestry needle at the end to seam, to seam the cowl. I use a long tail cast on to start the work and then we seam at the end. If you would like to do a provisional cast on and then graft the cowl together at the end, feel free to do that. I'm gearing this tutorial towards beginner knitters, so I thought it would be easier just to do a long tail cast on method and seam at the end. But if you're more advanced and would like to um, graft the work, feel free to, to do that. All right, let's get started. I just wanted to quickly show you guys what the cowl looks like flat before it is seamed together. So we cast on using the long tail cast on method, complete stockinette stitch for a little bit, then do a cable row followed by 17 rows of stockinette stitch, and then we do another cable row. So there are 17 rows of stockinette stitch between each cable row with a total of four cable rows. Um, and then you'll seam everything together at the end. We are gonna start by casting on 18 stitches. So make sure you leave a long enough tail to cast on 18 stitches using the long tail cast on method. So once you've got your tail, you're gonna to wanna to start by creating a slip knot. And you're gonna take one of your needles, slip the slip knot on the needle. Make sure you have your tail in front. Tighten the slip knot, but not too tight. This will count as our first cast on stitch. We need a total of 18 stitches, so I'm gonna cast on 17 more stitches. So you grab the yarn, go under the yarn around your thumb, over the yarn around your index finger, and pull through. You've cast on your second stitch. Cast on your third. All right, once you've got your 18 stitches cast on, you're going to turn the work and purl a row. And what we're doing now is we are going to knit stockinette stitch, um, and then we will cable. And we are seaming this in the middle of a cable section so we will normally have about 18 rows in between our cables. Um, but because we're starting halfway, we are going to knit, um, we're going to knit about nine rows here. And I'll show you. 
than what we'll do. So you purl on the wrong side and knit on the right side. So that was row one. On the 10th row, we're gonna do our first cable. So that was row one. This is row two. We're just going to knit this row. All right. And then um, I will complete this um, and then on our 10th row, I'll show you how to cable. So this is row two. And you're just gonna keep knitting stockinette stitch for a total of nine rows. And then we will cable on our 10th row. All right, so I will meet you back here after I've finished a wrong side row, that ninth row, and I will be on the right side of the work. So this is the wrong side of the work. And I will show you how to do our first cable row. All right, so keep doing stockinette stitch for a total of nine rows ending after a wrong side row. Okay, so I have completed knitting nine rows. I'm on the 10th row on the right side, and you can always count the little Vs to make sure you've completed enough. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rows. Okay, so we are going to do, um, we're gonna work a cable row now. So you're gonna wanna take your cable needle or double pointed needle, whatever it is you're using. And if you're using um, a cable needle, um, you just want to make sure you're slipping the stitches off of, um, off of this so that you can knit them correctly. You just want to make sure you're not going to knit twisted stitches. So, um, you just slip them off like this. One, two, we're slipping off five stitches, three, four, five. And this way, you can slide them down. You're going to slide them down and then we can work them off this way, inserting our needle this way. Okay, so just pay attention to how you're moving the stitches off of the needles so that you can knit them so that they're not twisted. So we'll be able to slide the work down and then knit these off without twisting the stitches. So once you have placed the first five stitches on the double pointed needle or your cable needle, you're gonna wanna hold them in the back of the work. Okay, and you have the end of your yarn over here. Now you're going to knit these next four stitches. So you place five stitches on the cable needle and hold in the back. And then we're going to knit the next four stitches. Okay, so you have the back of the work over here and we are going to bring it all the way over here so we can knit these next four stitches. This is a little wonky, so give yourself some grace and be patient. So we are going to knit four stitches. One, two, three, four. All right, so now we are going to knit the five stitches off of the cable needle. Make sure these stitches don't slip off. So one thing that's tricky because this is such a wide cable is you need to make sure that you're knitting these off in the correct direction. You always want to see the stockinette side facing you. You don't want to see the wrong side of the work facing you. So make sure you're facing the right direction. And we're going to slip these stitches to the end, making sure that you're not knitting them off in a twisted way. So I am going to get these stitches ready. I've got my yarn, and this can be tricky. You need to pull this yarn to the back of the work here and knit this. So we're knitting these five stitches now, and this is difficult. You're twisting a lot of yarn, so you need to work slowly and carefully, making sure you're knitting these off so that they're not twisted. I'm going into the stitch this way. That's two, three, four, five. Okay, we have completed our first cable. 
just be patient. It can be very difficult to get that cable down. This is a thick cable as well, so it's hard to do. Okay, so now we're going to do a cable in the opposite direction. We just completed a right-leaning cable in this direction because the work is starting to slant this way to the right. Now we're doing a left-leaning cable. So we're going to slip five stitches back onto our cable needle. One, two, oops, I have this stitch twisted. I'm facing the wrong direction because I undid some of my work. So three, and this is the same way, four, five. So just make sure you've got your stitches all facing in the right direction. And now we're going to hold our work in the front. Okay, so we held the work, we held the cable needle in the back before. Now we're holding it in the front. And this will create a twist in the opposite direction. Okay, so you're going to have this big gap here. And now we're going to knit these four stitches. One, two, three, four. Okay, so your work looks like this now. It can look like kind of a mess. So you can drop this left needle because now all we're doing is knitting these stitches off of the cable needle. Okay, so now we've got the yarn here. We're going to twist the work, and this can be tight. You're going to knit these five stitches off of the cable needle. And I'm just referring to my double pointed needle as cable needle. This is abbreviated as CN in the pattern, cable needle. So now you're just knitting those five stitches off. And you have completed your first cable row. It might not look like much of a cable right now, but you can start to see that you've got some stitches leaning to the left and some stitches leaning to the right. So this is one giant, this cowl is basically one giant cable. So now we're going to knit 17 rows. And then on that 18th row, we're going to complete this same cable row again. So you just turn the work now, and you'll just purl all the way back as if you normally would. And this, you know, there's nothing special to do after, right after the cable row. Just make sure you're working the stitches in order here. It might feel a little tight, but just purl across this row and you will have a gap here. You will have a gap from the cable. That's just the way it rolls. Um, but as you continue to do stack a net stitch, it kind of comes all together. When you have a large cable, you can have a big gap. But as you continue to work, that gap won't be as noticeable. You're twisting yarn and skipping stitches, so you will get a bit of a gap. Okay, so that was my first row. Here is my second row after the cable row. So we're knitting 17 total rows and then we are doing um, another cable row. So I will meet you back here after I've completed stock a net stitch for a total of 18 rows after that cable row. And again, you're going to want to make sure you've um, you're have you ready to cable after you've completed a wrong side row or a purl row. Okay, so that was, this is row two after the cable. I'm going to start row three, and I will meet you back here after I've completed row 17. Okay, so I knit stack a net stitch for 17 rows after the cable row. So you can count. So you can see there's a little gap here. That's the cable row right here. So if I count, um, I should have 17 rows after. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So I'm on the 18th row. Um, after my last cable row. 
So now it's time to cable again. So I'll just show you this again. I'm going to slip the first five stitches onto the cable needle. One, two, three, four, five, making sure they're in the right direction so I can knit correctly into these stitches. Slip those stitches on the cable needle. We're going to hold them in the back. I've got my yarn over here. We're going to knit the next four stitches. One, and you can kind of pull that first stitch a little tight so you don't have too much of a gap. Two, three, four. I'm going to make sure these stitches don't slide off of this needle. I'm going to make sure um, that my cable needle is turned so that the right side of the work is facing me. I'm going to slip these stitches towards the end. I'm going to make sure my yarn is in the back of the cable needle and then I'm going to knit these five stitches off of the cable needle. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, slide those on. I'm going to take my cable needle and move the next five stitches, slip these stitches onto the cable needle. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to hold the cable needle in the front of the work now and knit to the end or those next four stitches. Two, three, four. And now I'm going to knit the stitches off of the cable needle. One, two, three, four, five. And now we've completed our second cable row. So we've got two cable rows complete. Now we will do the same thing. We're just going to repeat. We're going to um, knit stockinette stitch for 17 rows again and um, do the cable row on the 18th row. So same thing. So you just purl across. So I will meet you back here when it's time for another cable row. And I'll just show you that one more time. And... Um, we'll keep, keep knitting. All right, I'll see you guys back here when it's time to cable again. So again, you complete 17 rows and stack a net stitch, purling on the wrong side, knitting on the right side. And then on the 18th row again, after that last cable row, um, we'll complete another cable row. So if you want to keep track, you can place a stitch marker on the cable row to help you keep track of how many rows you have left to do. Okay, so that was row one after the cable row, and now I'm gonna knit on the right side for row two. I'll see you back here when it's time to cable again. And just want to say again, it's normal to have a, a little gap there. You know, the stitches get twisted um, across so many stitches, so you will have a bit of a gap there. But as you can see, it kind of, you don't really see it because the yarn, um, because of the way the stitches kind of fall. So even though it looks so big as you start to work it, once you um, work the stack net stitch, um, the, the cable row kind of closes up and you don't see that gap. Okay, so I am ready to do my third cable row and I just wanted to show you what the work is starting to look like. So I completed my second cable row and then I completed 17 rows in stuck in that stitch and now on that 18th row after my last cable row, it's time to complete another cable row. Okay, so I'm just going to show you this again um, just so you can see it, but we're going to slip those first five stitches 
on the cable needle, hold them in back. We're going to knit four stitches. And then I'm going to knit the five stitches off of the cable needle. And I'm going to get the work in the right place here. Whoop. All right, so time to knit these stitches off the cable needle. One, two, three, four, five, All right, now I am going to slip the next five stitches on the cable needle and I'm going to hold the cable needle in the front. I'm going to knit the next four stitches. And now I'm going to knit the five stitches off of the cable needle. Okay. okay, so we just finished a cable row. Now we're gonna do the same thing where we knit stack and add stitch for 17 rows and we will complete our last cable row. So there are four cable rows. And then we'll complete stack and add stitch for a little bit longer just to mirror what this side looks like. We'll bind off and seam. So I will see you back here when it's time to do our last cable row um, and I'll show you how to complete the work. Okay, now it's time to complete our fourth cable row. So I just, I had finished my third cable row. I knit 17 rows and now I'm on the right side to do my last cable row. So I'll just show you that one more time here. Slip the first five stitches on the cable needle. We're gonna hold the cable needle in the back and we are going to knit the next four stitches. One, two, three, four. Then we are, I've got a little strand here. We've got, um, then we will work the stitches from the cable needle, making sure our yarn is in the right place around the back. Our work is not twisted. We see the right side of the work. So we'll knit these stitches off. One, two, three, four, five. Then we will move the next five stitches onto our cable needle. We will hold the work, the cable needle in the front. We will knit the last four stitches here off the left hand needle. Then we can drop our left hand needle because we will just be knitting these five stitches off of the cable needle. And now we've completed our last cable row. So we've got, um, basically we need to mirror what this end looks like over here, because we're gonna be seaming kind of in the middle of a cable. Um, so we are gonna complete nine rows, okay, in stock and that stitch, and then we will bind off on the right side. And it is a tad longer um, on the ends just to account for the seaming that we'll do. 
Um, if you did want to add some length, you could do it here. Just note that um, you know, you're not necessarily going to be seaming right in the middle of a cable. Um, okay, so I will meet you back here. So you just do stockinette stitch, so purl on the wrong side, knit on the right side uh, for nine rows, and then we're going to bind off on the right side on that tenth row. So I will see you back here after you've completed a wrong side row, a purl row, and you um, are on the right side. Okay, so I'll see you back here after you've done nine rows in stockinette. All right, so I have knit nine more rows, um, and it's time for me to bind off on the right side on that tenth row after the last cable row. So again, we're just trying to get it to mirror what the other side looks like. So when we seam it, it's seamed in, in, the, in the middle of a cable row. So now it's time to bind off on the right side. And to bind off, you simply just knit the first two stitches. And you're going to want to bind off kind of loosely, not too, and just don't make it too tight. Then what we're going to do is just simply slip that first stitch over the stitch we just knit and drop that. So we've got one stitch on the right hand side. We always want to end up with one stitch on the right hand side. So we knit the next stitch and then simply lift that first stitch over the stitch we just knit and drop it. So we've got one stitch over here and then you just keep working your way across um, binding off one stitch at a time here all the way across. And then I'll show you what to do when you get to the very last stitch. I'll show you what to do when we have to end the work. Um, and unfortunately my skein has a knot in it. Um, so just ignore that as you see that coming here. We're almost to the end, but you just continue to bind off all the way across so it's starting to look like this. And then when you get to that final stitch, you're going to want to leave, you basically you keep that stitch on there for right now, you're going to want to leave a pretty long tail, long enough to um, have you seam this um, to the other side, just so you, it just prevents you have to, from having to join a new piece of yarn. So leave, leave a long enough tail to seam. I always leave a really long tail, but that's, that's the amount of yarn I left. And then when you've got that last stitch and you've cut the yarn, you can just pull that stitch through. All right, so now we're ready to seam the work and your piece is looking like this. Okay, so now it's time to seam um, this side and this side together. So we end it over here. I'm going to fold the work so that we've got our um, the end over here. This is, this is the tail that we left so we could seam. And we are going to be seaming these two sides together. So thread your tapestry needle. And I, um, I'm going to show you how to seam these sides together. So we are going to work through the V's. So take the very last V here and insert your needle through the end and pull through. We're going to just tuck that other tail away here. And you can see the V on this side. This is an upside down V over here. So you, you 
pull your tapestry needle through that V and then you come up and you're going to work through that V up here. And we are just going to keep working through the top V's and the bottom V's. There's the bottom V. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so you can see a little bit better. Okay, so we're just working through the V's. It's going to be right side up on the top and upside down on the bottom. All right, and this allows us to kind of mimic the stitch. And you can tell it kind of creates a seamless look on the outside as we get going. The idea is to create a seam that isn't very visible. So if you seam everything up in this way, it starts to look like our knitting just continues without that seam. And you just work your way across in this manner. All right, I'm nearing the end here. And I'm just gonna go through one more time up here to finish it off. And then we can weave in our ends by coming in here and I just kind of, there's, you know, no exact science to, to weaving in ends. The goal is just to make sure that you don't see extra strands on the right side. So if you just continue to kind of weave your yarn back through the seam, you won't really see it on the other side as long as you don't go really deep into the stitches. But I'm just kind of weaving this back in here and then you can snip the end, pull it a little bit so it goes back in and then you'll do the same thing for this tail, just thread your needle and run the thread, the, the yarn back through the seam over here. And snip it. I try to avoid tying knots so that the work um, is as smooth as possible. All right, so we just wove in our ends there. We can turn our work right side out. And there you go, now you've completed your cable cowl. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this pattern and this tutorial. Please be sure to like the video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this. It helps other knitters find the tutorials and um, you know you can get notified of my other patterns and tutorials when they get published. Thanks guys.